Hello again, this is Professor Jim Cathy. Today we are doing out of the OpenStax Astronomy free textbook, chapter 20, called Between the Stars, Gas and Dust in Space. Here we go. Here is a nebula gas cloud taken by the Hubble Space Telescope along with some hot stars right there in the middle, some blue hot stars very beautiful picture we have different types <coughs> of interstellar matter and that is stuff that is in between the stars and planets we have different gas clouds nebula that are out there my favorite is the orion nebula so much a favorite i named a dog orion in the Orion Nebula, we have a star birthing region. This is gas and dust that is forming new stars, right there in the middle, especially. And in the middle, you can't really see it, but there are four or six stars, and that is called the trapezium. I have done a lot of work with the trapezium. Uh, that was very difficult back in the 1990s. We can look at the absorption lines of spectra going through an interstellar cloud to determine uh, what it's made up of and how it's moving. Twenty-one centimeter radiation is given off by cold molecular hydrogen. What it's good for is an interstellar medium. Here we have Harold Ewan and Edward Purcell who used a horn antenna at Harvard to look at 21 centimeter radiation. About 11,000 years ago a star died and exploded and we have this supernova remnant left over. Um, one of the neat discoveries in chemistry was the discovery of fullerene C60, and they called this buckyball, a form of carbon. <clears throat> this dark object, named Barnard 68, is very close to Earth and it has a lot of gas and dust, lots of dust. Here's Barnard at the Lick Observatory. More pictures of Orion, including the Horsehead Nebula, right there, pretty neat. We can see infrared emission spectra in the Milky Way. This is very beautiful to me. The Pleiades star cluster. Blue light given off by hot stars in an area that has some gas and dust around it. Lots of gas. We call these the Seven Sisters. Here is that dark cloud in the infrared. <clears throat> and here you can see there are stars in it and behind it, but because of the dust, bends that light and makes it so red uh, from obscuring the light that we see these red stars behind it. Well, we can have a uh, dust scattering light and it goes in all different directions to the observer. A cosmic ray pioneer, Victor Hess, uh, comes back to Earth in this balloon in 1912 to look for cosmic rays. <coughs> I have detected cosmic rays. Here we have the entire sky in x-rays and we can see a lot of them in the disk of the Milky Way. 
That's it. That does it for chapter 20. Thank you for joining me. We'll be going all the way through chapter 30 in this series. Well, did you enjoy that episode of 10-Minute Astronomy? If so, check out all the other videos in that playlist for 10-Minute Astronomy and other videos on my channel, and then hit the subscribe button right there. Thanks.